Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2021 P4G Seoul Summit for a session. My name is Olivia Lee, and I will be your host for the next two hours program. This special breakout session on forest organized by the Chorus Forest Service is themed Forest for Global Net Zero and Peace. In response to the global climate crisis, the importance of forests as carbon sinks is all the more emphasized to achieve carbon neutrality goals by 2050 and to meet greenhouse gas reduction targets by 2030. At the same time, however, the LULUCF sector, including agriculture and forestry, accounts for 23% of global greenhouse gas emission which is why we must find ways to utilize in a sustainable and strategic manner our forests. Today's special session on forests will introduce the role of forests as carbon sinks and peacemaker and shed light on the programs and best practices in the global LUCF sector. This session will also allow us to meet forest policies in different countries, international organization, private sector, and to contemplate furthermore on forest protection and utilization. First, we will have keynote speeches delivered by four distinguished guests under the theme of the role of forest in climate crisis. Please welcome Mr. Choi Byung Am, Minister of the Korea Forest Service, Dr. Chu Dong Yu, Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization, Mr. Ibrahim Thiao, Executive Secretary of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, and last but not least, Mr. Chris Coons, Senator of the United States of America. Thank you very much for being with us today. And our first keynote speech will be delivered by Mr. Choi Byung Am, Minister of the Korea Force Service. Minister Che is currently playing a key role in presenting Korea's forest policy vision and direction. Today, his speech will be on forest strategy for net zero and peace. Please welcome Mr. Che Byung-am, 
to the stage. Distinguished guests, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am Byung Am Che, Minister of the Korea Forest Service. I'd like to express uh, my gratitude to all the panelists who spared the valuable time uh, for the special breakout session on forest. Uh, despite the pandemic uh, and speakers from abroad uh, who delivered their video messages from the other side of the world, uh, <clears throat> The world has been uh, suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic, as you know, for over a year. Uh, however, uh, the next global crisis is already coming, climate crisis. This is why uh, we are gathered here today uh, to find a solution. Uh, I believe that the most important solution is forest. This is because forests are the foundation of the natural ecosystem. Growing forest saves our future generation and the value grows over time. Certainly, forest is the antidote to our uh, civilization. I'm sure you saw the pictures of a girl at the venue of today's, today's event. Uh, this teenage girl is uh, likely to stay alive until the year of 20, uh, 21, uh, two, 2100. Uh, the year uh, 2100 sounds too far to me, uh, but to this girl, uh, 2,100 is uh, going to be an ordinary year. 2030 uh, might be one of her college years, and 2050, a year as a mother of her child. Now it is hard for us to uh, cross borders due to COVID-19, to overcome the, the pandemic, all nations must come together. Uh, this is because all nations can go back to normal uh, once COVID-19 is controlled completely. So the first letter P of the P4G Summit, which stands for partnering, has special meaning. Partnering indicates collaboration between governments or public sectors and the private companies. It also means advanced nations and developing countries need to share wisdom, technology, and experience with each other. In fact, the, uh, the Ethiopian project of the Korea Forest Service has been selected as a P4G partnership project last year. As you see in the left side picture, this is a project of which, of which the governments, public and private sectors of both Korea and Ethiopia. And in the uh, right side, uh, this project aims to uh, restore the forest ecosystem and build a traditional style shade grown coffee farm. I am confident that uh, this project will successfully restore the forest ecosystem and gener generate a sustainable income of local residents. Then, this business model uh, will be uh, repli replicated in other people's member countries, such as Kenya, Vietnam, 
Colombia, and Indonesia. Carbon neutrality or net zero is our ultimate goal, which will be uh, discussed today. Uh, the value of forest in climate, uh, climate crisis is outstanding. Uh, when a forest is well managed, it is a carbon sink. But if it is mismanaged or burnt, it creates emissions. 80% of land ecosystem biodiversity comes from forest. 75% of fresh water is supplied to cities through forest. The oxygen we breathe in is produced by trees. After all, forests are our life. However, we are losing our forest. The UN General Assembly declared 2021 to 2030 as the decade on ecosystem rest, uh, restoration. In 2020, uh, the World Economic Forum launched the One Trillion Trees Initiative, which is getting worldwide supporting, support. In last October, Korea also joined this global movement and declared the plan to achieve net zero by 2050. The Korea Forest Service has announced a draft strategy on how to utilize forest to reach net zero by 2015. We are gathering valuable insights from the stakeholders. Our provisional basic plan is to plant 100 million trees every year, totaling up to 3 billion trees in three decades. It's the same as every Korean citizen planting two trees uh, uh, on average uh, per year. The, the average uh, forest of Korea will absorb 34 million tons of uh, CO2 a year uh, by the time we reach 2050. And another important role of forest is peace building. Peace building is another vision of the forest session. In addition to global natural, uh, tree planting is uh, building peace with honesty and sincerity. Just as the uh, UNCCD Executive Secretary already said, Korea launched the Peace Forest Initiative at UNCCD COP14 in September uh, 2019. Peace Forest Initiative is built up the belief that planting trees is building peace. PFI seeks to promote forest restoration of neighboring countries and different ethnic groups. Of course, the uh, PFI contributes to meeting the SDGs. In closing, today's discussion is going to continue until UNFCCC COP26 in November and World Forestry Congress in May next year. I sincerely hope that the uh, World Forest Congress next year will be the first event for all international forest leaders and experts to gather after the pandemic is over. I invite you all to the event. Dr. Wangari Matai said uh, when he plant trees, uh, we plant the seeds of peace and seeds of hope. I hope that 
the outcomes of today's talk will plan, plant the commitment of finding hope and peace through forest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Choi byung am for sharing your insights and Korea's forest policy vision. Let us now watch a short video clip of the 15th World Forestry Congress that was just mentioned by Minister Che. nice and powerful video. Next, Dr. Chiu Dong Yu, Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization, will speak on the role of forests and vision of the WFC. Honorable ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I congratulate the Republic of Korea for hosting this important event and thanks Minister for Chom byung An for inviting me to speak. Climate change is one of the most urgent challenges for present and future generations. Increased global temperatures are affecting all regions and countries with the most severe implication for those living in the poverty and food insecurity. We are still far from the two degree C objective set out in the Paris Agreement. Estimates suggest that some of all targets submitted so far will only limit the global warming to 2.4 degrees C by the end of this century. Coupled with other factors, the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated world food insecurity and crisis more than 155 million people are currently suffering from the acute food insecurity, but there is hope. We can successfully address these challenges by working together. We can make the COVID-19 recovery process a holistic, inclusive, sustainable, and green. As the global community responds to this time of unprecedented climate, health, and economic crisis, the net zero commitments are becoming part of the recovery package aimed at building back better and greener. Actions in the agriculture and forest sectors can greatly support this effort. As land-based emissions account for 23% of greenhouse gas emissions coming largely from the converting forest land to agriculture, both sectors can offer critical solutions in climate change mitigation and adaptation. Forests act as a natural carbon sink by providing food, feed, fiber, and income. They help the fight food insecurity and the poverty, give us clean water and air, while the housing mostly of the Earth's terrestrial biodiversity. However, only sustainably managed forests can provide this benefit. We, must turn the tide on deforestation and forest degradation. A conducive financial environment is needed to prevent unsustainable forest management. For the greener, 
and resilient future. All stakeholders must take decisive actions to build a forest-based solution into their strategies, especially net zero strategy should rely on forests. Building on its broad expertise on sustainable forest and land management, FAO stand ready to assist the members in building their capacities, transferring technologies, and supporting access to the climate financial. To maximize the potential of forests in achieving global net zero, we must share knowledge, both traditional and scientific. We must exchange data, good practice and experiences. We must guarantee that appropriate financial instrument available to support the countries in achieving these goals. And we must all come together, governments, international organizations, research and academia, financial institutions, the private sector, civil society organizations, as well as indigenous people and the local communities. Ladies and gentlemen, the 15th World Forestry Congress to be held next year in Seoul is particularly important for dialogue, commitment, and the partnership of all stakeholders. FO is working closely with the Republic of Korea to ensure a successful and productive event. And the theme, building a green, healthy, and resilient future with the forests that contributes to the achievement of a 2030 agenda. FAO's new strategy framework for the next decade seeks to support the 2030 agenda through the transformation to more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems for better production, better nutrition, a better environment, a better life leaving no one behind. I firmly believe that the implementation of FO for betters will contribute to net zero. And I'm hopefully that today's P4G special breakdown session on forests can provide a momentum to strengthen solidarity among all partners, foster dialogue and inform on the scale of the commitments. I wish the P4G Seoul Summit, every success. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Director General Chu Dong Yu, for sending us uh, your message. Moving on, Mr. Ibrahim Thiao, Executive Secretary of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, will make a speech on the vision and strategy of PFI, Private Finance Initiative, as a global policy program launched in September 2019. Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure for me to join you here today. First, I would like to thank the government of the Republic of Korea for convening this P4G meeting, and in particular, this session on forests. The success of the Republic of Korea in managing and restoring its ecosystems is known worldwide. The case study serves as an inspiration, especially as we launch the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. Departing from a break point where both the economy and the ecology of the country were on the brink of collapse, to being recognized as one of the most advanced economies in the world, while bringing the forest cover to 63% in just one generation. And as an active party, to the UN Convention to Combat Desertification, the Republic of Korea has shown leadership on multiple occasions. First, from hosting the Conference of the Parties to supporting the most successful Changwon Initiative, to the recently developed program called the Peace Forest Initiative, which was launched at the 14th session of the Conference of the Parties to the UN Convention to Combat Desertification in 2019 in New Delhi, India. First introduced by the Republic of Korea, the idea was welcomed by parties to the convention for its value for contributing to achieving land degradation neutrality by caring for our land and forest and contributing to our collective security and stability. Land is a foundation for life on earth and a fundamental asset for humanity 
and rural livelihoods. We depend on land for our food security. Land and its ecosystems support our livelihoods and provides us with the clean water we drink and affordable energy. Sustainable land management contributes to mitigating climate change, reducing disaster risk, securing our health. The current pandemic and its zoonotic origin have starkly reminded us. Yet, more than one-fifth of Earth's land area is degraded, undermining the well-being of 3.2 billion people, half of the world population. Land degradation and deforestation are considered as a threat multiplier for insecurity and conflict. With economic opportunities vanishing due to degradation and availability of natural resources, tensions and competitions are expected to accelerate amongst different land users. And distress migration might be the only option left for land-dependent communities. In fragile and conflict-affected countries, weak institutions and poor governance further exacerbate the degradation of land and natural resources, leading to a vicious cycle of instability. In politically unstable situations, the management of natural resources is even more challenging. Rapid reconstruction often neglects sustainable management of natural resources, undermining future peace. Climate change just adds fuel to the fire. Fortunately, the opposite is also true. Investing in land is also a tool for peace building. If we care for the land and the forest, the land and forest will in, will in turn care for us and they feed us. Land and forest support our collective well-being. Practical steps can prevent grievances from turning into violent conflicts. With the right institutions and governance systems in place to manage land efficiently, equitably, and sustainably, this is possible. Indeed, the shared management of water, land, forests, wildlife, and protected areas are frequently cited as examples of environmental cooperation for peace building. We can learn from past experiences where countries emerging from conflicts have addressed land and water issues effectively. They have laid the foundation for a durable peace. The most famous example of environmental conservation to mediate hostility between nations is the Cordillera Condor between Peru and Ecuador. But there are many more examples. These peace parks were established as mechanism for bilateral cooperation when countries are coming out of a conflict. They are used to promote the social, cultural, and economic development of local communities in both countries. One could imagine similar shared management and resources across Africa, Asia, and other parts of the world. It would need a bold vision and flexible governance arrangements, but I have no doubt it would facilitate cooperation between the countries involved. I believe the Global Peace Forest Initiative can serve as a strong vehicle to promote well-being, peace, and prosperity. Thanks to the Peace Forest Initiative, we hope to support more countries, more communities, to peacefully address their differences. It can provide a practical tool to, to facilitate exchanges and cooperation, forging broader and broader partnerships. Nature is a peace builder. Nature is a pacifist. Nature is an inherent unifier. It, do, it does not divide. We humans create conflicts. We waged a war on nature itself. This must stop for our own stake for our survival. We are fortunate as the launching this year of the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration is a solid framework for these efforts. From a peace building perspective, whether these differences become a source of division and violent conflicts or an opportunity for positive change and growth depends on how they are understood and addressed. Looking ahead, 
I wish to share that we are set to take bold strides to pull the Peace Forest Initiative to the level of a full global recognition with support and great success. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to the government of the Republic of Korea for its support for enabling the embark on this ambitious journey towards sustainable peace and prosperity for all. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Executive Secretary, Mr. Ibrahim Theo, for raising awareness on land degradation, but also sharing your vision and strategy of this global policy program. Now our, our final speech will be delivered by U.S. Senator Mr. Chris Coons. Mr. Chris Coons will present the Trillion Trees and Natural Carbon Storage Act in the U.S intended to restore forests in the United States and around the world to achieve carbon neutrality. Let's have a look at his message. Anyang Haseo. Hello, I'm U.S. Senator Chris Coons from Delaware, and I'm honored to be able to address you virtually at the P4G Summit in Seoul and to discuss the importance of global climate action. I'd like to first thank the P4G Initiative for organizing this important summit and for your leadership in helping our world achieve a cleaner future. I also wanna thank the government of the Republic of Korea and the Korean Forest Service for inviting me to participate in bringing attention to the important role that forests and our natural world will play in reaching net zero emissions. Our US Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, was so right in recently saying that the U.S.-Korea alliance is the linchpin of peace, security, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific. And I'm so pleased that President Moon is soon going to meet with President Biden in Washington, D.C. I last had the opportunity to visit Seoul in April 2019, and I deeply value the close and enduring partnership between the United States and the Republic of Korea. I greatly value our country's partnership and look forward to working closely with Korea on a host of pressing issues, including tackling climate change. Addressing climate change is a top priority for President Biden and many leaders in the United States Congress. Our president has taken significant climate action in just his first few months in office, rejoining the Paris Agreement, committing to eliminate half of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, and committing to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. The only way to meet these ambitious climate goals is for countries around the world to work together because emissions don't have borders and neither do the tragic and growing impacts of climate change. Tackling climate change is also one of my top priorities in the U.S. Senate. That's why several years ago I co-founded the bipartisan Senate Climate Solutions Caucus with Senator Mike Braun. Senator Braun and I have also recently introduced the Trillion Trees and Natural Carbon Storage Act, which will help protect and restore healthy forest ecosystems and naturally capture carbon from the air by supporting abundant new tree growth that will also help landowners participate in carbon credit markets. I'm also working with Senator Rob Portman to reauthorize the Tropical Forest and Coral Reef Conservation Act. This bill provides debt relief to developing countries in exchange for long-term commitments to protect tropical forests and coral reefs. This existing program has already protected millions of acres in tropical forests, and we're simply rededicating the United States to extending it. These two bills are just a few of many examples of bipartisan support in the United States Congress for natural climate solutions. I'm also going to be working on other policies to invest in energy innovation, to make communities here more resilient, and to put a price on carbon, just as South Korea and so many of our international partners have already done. Thank you for allowing me to participate today and for your leadership in providing innovative solutions to tackling the climate crisis. I hope you enjoy the remainder of the summit, and I look forward to continuing to work across borders to advance strong climate action and fight for a more sustainable future. A heartfelt thank you to our speakers for participating in the P4G Seoul Summit Force session today. Before we move on now to the next session, we would like to have a short Q&A uh, session with the audience. 
So may I ask uh, our minister, Che byung -am, to come to the stage and answer uh, the Q&A session, please. Thank you. Um, I have a question to uh, Mr. Minister. Um, I understand that the uh, forest sector net zero policies is under the framework of the uh, President Moon Jae-in new Green New Deal. So does the uh, Korea Forest Service have policies for forests abroad? And which countries or regions will the uh, Korea Forest Service focus on? Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you very much for your, uh, for your question. Uh, of course, uh, we are going to uh, plant trees abroad as well. Uh, the Korea Forest Service is uh, now actively cooperating with other countries uh, based on our experience and successful forest restoration. Uh, in order to uh, reach carbon neutrality, uh, we are focusing on uh, Red Press. Currently, uh, we are promoting pilot project in three countries. Uh, for example, last year, uh, we successfully reduced 650,000 tons of greenhouse gas in Cambodia. Uh, as this year is the, the implementing year of the Paris Agreement, uh, we are going to expand our Red Plus project from Asia to Africa and uh, Central America. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question and also, Minister, for uh, your answer. Thank you very much. Okay. We will wrap up the, the Q&A session. And let us now welcome two more individuals for our topic presentations. Mr. Alex Rudy, manager of the World Resources Institute, and Mr. Kim Hyung Soo, founder and chief executive officer of Tree Planet. They will make presentation on institutions, policies, and cases of forestry use. Mr. Alex Rudy, manager of the World Resource Institute, has analyzed policies and legislative bills for forest restoration in the US and published multiple articles as well as research reports. Today, he will make a presentation on the opportunity of carbon removal from the trees and forests in the US and the legislative proposal. Hi, my name is Alex Rudy, and I manage work on natural climate solutions in the United States for the World Resources Institute. Thank you so much to the Korea Forest Service for inviting me to participate in the P4G Summit by video, and my apologies that I'm not able to attend the session live. It's an honor to present alongside so many incredible leaders on forest and climate change from all around the world. We now face the stark reality that reducing emissions alone won't be enough to stabilize global temperature rise. We also need to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere at a staggering scale. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change made this clear in their 2018 special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius. To limit warming to 1.5 degrees, the global economy needs to reach net zero emissions by mid-century. Any emissions we fail to eliminate will need to be recovered directly from the atmosphere. Restoring atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide to safer levels also requires the planet to go net carbon negative, which will require carbon removal capabilities to continue to expand through the end of the century. Carbon removal can include both nature-based approaches and emerging technologies like direct air capture. WRI's research shows that an all-of-the-above strategy on carbon removal is the best approach to ensure we can reach net zero emissions by 2050. This is particularly true in the United States, where we have mapped out the cumulative amount of carbon removal that we believe is possible from various sources over that time. As this chart shows, the single largest near-term opportunity comes from tree restoration. If we start now, and scale up to the maximum potential over 20 years, 
Tree restoration could remove 7 gigatons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by 2050 in the U.S. alone. But what exactly do we mean by tree restoration? Well, it includes reforestation of cleared or disturbed land, certainly, but it's also much more than that. We found that restocking forests, particularly in the eastern U.S., where they've been degraded by unsustainable harvesting practices like high grading or insect infestations and disease, represents the greatest carbon removal potential. There's also value in integrating trees into agricultural lands through silvopasture and other agroforestry systems, which build soil health and continue to produce food while increasing carbon removals. And finally, integrating more trees into our cities is critical not just for the carbon removal, but for a wide variety of other social and environmental benefits. Altogether, we could grow up to 60 billion new trees in the U.S. by taking full advantage of these opportunities for tree restoration. These trees could remove up to 540 million tons of carbon dioxide per year from the atmosphere at their full potential. That's equal to all the annual emissions from the U.S. agricultural sector. Of course, growing billions of new trees won't be easy or free. It'll require ambitious federal policy and investments from both the public and private sector. WRI's research shows that overcoming financial barriers to restoring trees at scale in the U.S. will require new public investment of four to four and a half billion dollars per year, sustained over 20 years. The majority of that is needed for incentives for private landowners like farmers and forest owners, since about 90% of the tree restoration opportunity occurs on private lands. But there's also a piece that needs to go to federal agencies to address the backlog of restoration projects on federal land. Even with that amount of funding, though, there's no guarantee that the full benefits from carbon removal will be realized, and that's why federal policy requires science-based safeguards. These include ecological safeguards to ensure that the right trees are planted in the right places, with a focus on native trees in historically forested landscapes. It includes agricultural safeguards, to make sure that tree restoration does not come at the expense of food production. And it includes monitoring safeguards that account for emissions from timber harvesting or from land clearing, in addition to removals from growing new trees. We will also need additional investments beyond the tree restoration projects themselves to lay the groundwork for a scalable national campaign. These needs include building out our tree nursery capacity, which would need to more than double just to accommodate new reforestation demand as well as expanding technical assistance for private landowners and strengthening our national forest carbon inventory by using new remote sensing technologies like spaceborne LIDAR. There are several current proposals in Congress that would address many of these needs. Senator Coons, who you heard give a keynote address just minutes ago, introduced the Bipartisan Trillion Trees and Natural Carbon Storage Act, which would set national targets for carbon removal from forests and other lands invest in nurseries, and improve monitoring capabilities. Another important proposal is the Climate Stewardship Act, which would provide billions of dollars to landowners for practices like tree planting that remove carbon. And the Bipartisan Replant Act would address the need on federal lands by expanding the Reforestation Trust Fund. These are just a few of the most promising bills before Congress. We now need the support to pass these pieces of legislation showing that the U.S. can lead on this issue and begin to work to restore billions of trees across our country. Here at WRI, we have several initiatives underway to accelerate tree restoration, both in the United States and around the world. In addition to our research and support of federal policy in the U.S. that I've drawn from today, we also engage states through the U.S. Climate Alliance Impact Partnership in developing their own plans to remove carbon from the air through tree restoration and other natural solutions. Internationally, our Global Restoration Initiative has a strong track record on this issue through programs like Initiative 20 by 20 in Latin America and the Caribbean, AFR 100 in Africa, and the recently launched TerraMatch platform. In addition, Global Forest Watch has also become the premier tool to monitor forest loss around the world, showing the size of the deforestation problem that we must also solve in order for tree restoration and other solutions to have our desired impact on the climate. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you all will join WRI 
in working toward tree restoration as well as forest conservation, both in the United States and around the world. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your presentation. That was Mr. Alex Rudy, manager of the World Resource Institute. Next, we will have an on-site uh, presentation. Let me now introduce Mr. Kim hyung Su, founder and chief executive officer of a Korean social venture company called Tree Planet. Mr. Kim has also participated in P4G partnership project in Ethiopia. And in today's session, he will present a P4G partnership business model, agroforestry for people and peace and prosperity in southern Ethiopia's coffee growing region. Please welcome him with a warm applause. Hello, everyone. My name is Hyung Soo Kim, CEO of Tree Planet. Thank you for coming. I can start to the, my introduce and my presentation. presentation Presentation is subject is the, the power of the partnership. Wood and lumber produce fruit and provides for homes for animals. But today, trees are cut down to past past. Desertification and fine dust and forest fire and COVID-19. Tree planning started in 2010. The creative way to planting trees for every people all over the world. We built one, 300 forests with the 100 million trees and planted 13 countries until the 10 years. First step is the tree planting game. This game is very simple. You can grow up the virtual tree, we will planting the real tree. But you can using the advertisement item, such as the fertilizer and solar power water pump, and receiving to the advertisement item fee and donating to the NGO. Let, let's show you the video. Game을 좋아하는 지연이가 나무를 심으면 어디선가 진짜 나무가 심어집니다. 지연이의 나무가 자랍니다. 게임을 하다 환경을 살리다. The trees um the virtual world were planted in China desert in 2013. We can plant the tree and together solar power system because they don't using the uh, solar power system so they can uh, keep the the water. So uh 2017 it changed the world. It's planting the tree and grow well. Um uh, do you like the BTS? So many K-pop stars and fan clubs is so many where. So we can build up to the BTS forest and girls generation forest with together the star fan clubs. Let's show you the video. 자신이 사랑하는 스타의 이름이 붙여진 나무들은 그들만의 특별한 날에 심어졌다. 1992년 5월 6일에 태어난 백현 오빠를 위해서 그 2014년 5월 6일에 숲을 만들었습니다. 가까이 할수 없는 스타 대신 팬들은 숲을 가꾸고 돌본다. 그리고 자연스럽게 숲을 사랑하는 마음으로 이어진다. 제가 백현 오빠를 사랑하는 만큼 나무를 정말 열정적이게 키우도록 하겠습니다. 졸업하기 유, 전까지 네. 네 절대 시들지 않게 네, 할머니 대소도 올게요. 전 영원한 네. 엑소 엘이니까. I'm a tree hugger, but they are tree lover, maybe. Um, next is a forest in peace. Is um, uh, remember the event that, that our society should not forget and pay our respect the brave citizen. So uh, five years ago, we have the very big accident in Sewol Memorial. It's a problem. So. We made the Sewol Memorial Forest with the Ojir Hepburn's family. Uh, let's show you the video.
Thank you very much for coming. We are here today as a family, not as politicians, not even as humanitarians, but as a family to extend our hand and our heart to all the families that have been affected by the tragedy of the sinking of the MVC wall. A year has now passed, and instead of sending flowers to the families, we wished to create something beautiful, a natural platform uh, amidst all of the investigations, all of the pain, all of the politics. We wanted to create a platform that would bring some uh, feelings of hope, comfort, and that would create a place from which everyone can work towards a, fut a future. We're working together with the Audrey Hepburn's uh, Children Foundation, and we built up to the uh, Sewol Memorial Forest in Jindo. Um, next is a collaboration with the Korean Forest Service and uh, Maker Farm. This is a crowdfunding program. You can crowdfunding, we can planting the coffee trees. The first step is uh, this project to establish the eco-friendly coffee farms in southwest Ethiopia. Uh, planting the coffee tree and shady tree together, and together is a solar power system and washing station is the, all of that. Uh, coffees need to the shade tree, and this shade tree is making the uh, natural fertilizer, and this is very organic and sustainable solution. We can making the crowdfunding, all of that sold out. So we making the very high quality coffee reward. So with the Terra Rosa, Terra Rosa is Korea number one so the specialty coffee company. And this coffee is launched in the shared offices like the WeWork, it's uh, 11 offices launched now. Let's show you the video. Coffee라고 다 똑같은 커피가 아니더라고요. 그러니까 정말 어떻게 컨트롤 하나에 따라서 커피 맛이 엄청나게 크게 자주이 되고 가격이 엄청나게 변동이 되더라고요. 똑같은 1킬로의 커피를 사더라도 더 고가로 팔수 있는 커피를 사는 게 낫지. 한국 갖고 와가지고 팔아봤는데 사람들이 맛없다고 다시 안 찾는 그런 커피를 사올 필요는 없는 거잖아요. 근데 그거를 이제 좋은 의도로 농장에 적용을 해보자면은 농장에서 이왕이면은 커피 나무 관리를 잘 해서 좋은 퀄리티의 커피를 생산만 해준다면 우리는 얼마든 이제 한국에서 잘팔수 있는데 이게 이제 가장 기본적인 생각이었던 거예요. 우리가 실행하는 사업 지역들에 가보면 길가에 각 국가별로 해당 마을을 도와줬다는 표지판들이 엄청 많이 꽂혀 있어요. 모르겠어요. 마을 자체가 아주 막잘 사는 것 같지는 않아. 여전히 엄청나게 무너져 있고 그래서 저 돈들은 다 어디로 갔나? 약간 이런 생각이 들 때도 있어요. 가장 경쟁력 있고 실력 있는 로컬 파트너를 찾아서 그들이 가장 잘 알고 있는 마을 사람들과 함께 협업하도록 하고 우리는 거기에서 나온 최고의 결과물, 제일 맛있는 커피를 한국에 있는 소비자들한테 판매를 해서 수익을 얻고 그걸 다시 돌아가서 농장에 재투자하고 사실 가장 중요한 서클은 우리만 있는 게 아니고 트리플래닛, 농장, 농부들, 그 다음에 현재 상상 함께하는 파트너들이 있어요. 전문가 파트너들. 이런 구조들이 있다 보니까 서스테너블한 구조가 만들 수 있는 거죠. 그늘나무를 심으면 커피가 더 맛있다 이런 정도만 알고 있었는데 에티오피아에 가보니까 그늘나무 수준이 아니고 완전 그냥 정글이에요 정글 그러니까 커피나무가 안 보여요 그리고 거기에 있는 커피가 세계에서 최고로 비싸고 제일 맛있는 커피라고 농장을 만들더라도 그늘나무를 한 그루라도 더 심어가지고 숲처럼 보이게 하자 커피나무 숲 커피 포레스트를 만드는 게 우리의 목표인 거예요 더 많은 커피 포레스트가 만들어질수록 자원보가 훨씬 더 많이 되겠죠. 
이 친구들한테 나 저번에 왔지? 나또 왔어. 다음에 또올 거야. 하면서 어떻게 보면은 뭐랄까 그 후견인 같은 그런 모티베이션을 좀 줬으면 좋겠다는 생각이 있었어요. 네. 그러니까 좀더 퍼스널하게 어그형또 왔네 약간 이런 느낌으로. 메이클 팜은 어, 어떻게 보면은 서로 행복하기 위해서 만들어가는 사업이니까. 농구들이나 우리나. 어, uh, as a result, Make Your Farm Coffee has the double average income level and developed the 20 tons coffee beans from the uh, farm. Uh, we are a B Corp certified and the tree planted uh, forest social impact is uh, 220 million US dollar and we planting tree every day is 300 300 trees. Um, we working work together Korea Forest Service and GGGI SK Forest together. Uh, I was an environmental documentary film director um, and became a social entrepreneur. Uh, so we had an excellent partner working together for over 10 years. Now our goal is the planting 100 million of trees uh, plant for. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kim Hyung-soo, uh, for all your efforts and also your fun and innovative project. We hope to see more in the future. We will now have an additional Q&A session with the audience. So if you have any question on previous remarks, please raise your hands. And uh, Mr. Kim will be delighted to, to, to provide some responses. Okay. Yes, here we have one question. Yes. Thank you for your presentation and uh, all the examples were very impressive. Um, I have a question about the... Mm, uh, I've been wondering how the private sector participation is, uh, ca can be increased in the global environmental issues and what is the main cause of the participation? So uh, what, what major company participate in the public-private partnership, and um, it, or is there any problem while involving in the PPP as a private company? Um, my presentation subject is the uh, power of the partnership. So uh, because of the environmental problem is uh, really big. So. Uh, not just solving the social venture and alone is a government side and civil society. Everybody is uh, not just alone. So uh, this problem is because very big. So we working together and partnership together. So uh, we can solving uh, this problem. So this is uh, my cause. So on a holistic perspective, be all together and work together yes, for right. partnership. Uh, any f other questions? Thank you very much for your good presentation. I have just a simple two questions. Uh, first is, were there any challenges you faced while conducting a PFI project in Ethiopia? Second one is, how do you think this point should be suppl uh, supplemented in the follow-up project in the future? Thank you. Yes, uh, PFI project is a uh, partnership is uh, very well. So uh, for Korean Forest Service and Tree Planet and uh, GGGI SK Forest is uh, very well. But just one problem is a uh, environmental problem is a uh, COVID-19. So we didn't. Uh, going to there and we don't working with together just uh, a virtual meeting every day so this is a very big problem but um, uh, second question is so uh, but just we can going to there and we keep going so uh, Today I talking about the, the Korean Forest Services officer. So how can we go there? So uh, this is our my question and my answer. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kim Hyung-soo for your participation today.
Next will be a panel discussion chaired by Ambassador Hyo Eun Jenny Kim, Deputy Director General of the Global Green Growth Institute. And we have the great honor to be joined by five panelists today. Ambassador Frode Solberg, His Excellency Norwegian Ambassador to Korea. Mr. Ricardo Calderon, Executive Director of the Asian Forest Corporation Organization. Ms. Milagros de Camps, Deputy Minister of the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources of the Dominican Republic. Mr. Herman Velasquez, Director of Mitigation and Adaptation Division of the Green Climate Fund. Mr. Chong In Bo, Chief Executive Officer at SK Forest. And lastly, Dr. Park eun -sik, Director General of the Korea Forest Service, who will answer questions on behalf of the panelists who could not join today's session. Thank you, Olivia. Um, as emphasized by previous speakers and presenters, uh, forest can play a significant role in transitioning into a low carbon resilient world of strong, inclusive, and sustainable growth. As we know, forests provide food, medicines, wood, fiber, and employment. They moderate fresh water flows, clean the air, and influence regional and community precipitation. Globally, forests provide a home to 70 million indigenous people and accommodate 80% of biodiversity on the planet. In addition, forests play a critical role in the fight against climate change by removing CO2 from the atmosphere. But unfortunately, forests and their ability to provide these wonderful benefits are under a serious threat, as we all know. In 2019, the world lost roughly one soccer field of forest every six seconds. The expansion of agriculture, mining, timber extraction, and other unsustainable practices are destroying and degrading forests around the world. Deforestation and forest degradation account for approximately 11% of carbon emissions, more than the entire global transportation sector. As a result, Halting deforestation and helping forests recover naturally could provide up to 30% of the climate solution. If tropical deforestation was a country, it would rank the third in CO2 emissions, only behind China and the United States. Therefore, forest is essential in achieving UN Sustainable Development Goals and implementation of Paris Climate Agreement. So, in this panel discussion, we will exchange ideas and experiences how to maximize the role of forest, the best natural solution to humanity's urgent climate crisis. We will also share views how forests can contribute to build peace and restore community as well, because forestation and agroforestry in degraded lands and conflict areas can provide opportunities to build community spirit and economic growth potential. So we have excellent panelists delivering diverse perspectives and views on the role of policies, projects, finance, and entrepreneurship on forest. His Excellency Ambassador of Norway to the Republic of Korea is joining virtually. Mr. Ricardo Calderon, Executive Director of AFOCO, is here with us. And Ms. Melgros de Cam, Deputy Minister from uh, the Dominican Republic, is joining online as well. And Dr. Jolman Velasquez, Director from Green Climate Fund, is with us. Mr. Chong Inbo, Chief Executive Officer from SK Forest, thank you for your presence. Also, Director General Park eun -sik from Korea Forest Service is joining. So, I would like to ask a question to all panelists. 
I'd like to invite you to elaborate the key efforts of your country, your organization, or your company to make forest as a key driving force in climate action, community restoration, and peace building. I also ask you to share your best practices or key lessons learned from your experiences. Deforestation and land degradation are more serious in developing countries. However, there is still a perception or view that natural conservation is only possible in rich countries, not relevant in developing countries. However, I am sure that you have good evidence and also success stories that forests can create more opportunities for sustainable economic growth. So I explained a little bit long, however, in a nutshell, my question is mainly three things. Please explain what your organization, your country, your company is doing and what are the best practices and lessons learned? And thirdly, I would like to ask you to share what will be the next steps towards global net zero and peace by fostering forest. So let me invite the ambassador from Norway first, and then I will invite next panelists. Ambassador, please. Dear Madam President, Dear Minister Che, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Let me first start by thanking the Korea Forest Service for the opportunity to say a few words at this important seminar on forests for global net zero and peace, which is a part of the P4G Seoul Summit's Green Future Session on Forests. Today's seminar is important as it will highlight the effects of forests as having the greatest potential for carbon removal and explore ways to strengthen international cooperation through forests. Destruction of forests threatens millions of people, often among the world's most vulnerable and whom many are depending on forests in their daily life. But all of us should be concerned, as this is a development that has serious effects for the whole global community. Unless we manage to halt tropical deforestation swiftly, we will not reach the Paris goals, with the consequences that will have for all of us. The Republic of Korea has successfully launched the Peace Forest Initiative, together with the UNCCD Secretariat. In many parts of the world, conflicts tend to be linked to forest areas. Many such conflicts extend beyond borders and involve more than one country. Conflicts over natural resources are common. Parties in ongoing conflicts often revert to illegal logging and illegal export of forest products as a source of quick cash. Some conflicts are caused by, or made worse by, an unresolved dispute on land, tenure, and access to resources. Therefore, land restoration and programs to support sustainability in land use can be powerful tools for promoting peace. We are very glad to see that the Republic of Korea has submitted its revised NDC and are stepping up to the net zero emissions by 2050 challenge. This is in many ways quite parallel to Norway, and we note that many of the strategies to be used also are similar. Last year, Norway released a plan for curbing domestic climate gas emissions, and our ambition, as expressed in the revised NDC, is to reduce emissions by at least 50% by 2030. In both countries, the use of forests as carbon sinks is one of many elements of the strategy. Time is running out to protect our tropical forests from irreversible loss. A new type of collaboration is essential to fight the climate crisis and achieve net zero emissions globally by 2050. This is why Norway is proud to have joined our partners in the LEAF coalition which is bringing together government and private sector resources to support the large-scale efforts that must be mobilized to halt deforestation. Let me conclude by underlining our gratitude 
for the close and continuous cooperation we have with the Korea Forest Service. We hope this seminar could serve as a platform for increased level of global cooperation in helping countries reduce their deforestation, enhance restoration, as well as improving the livelihoods of forest-dependent people. And not the least, it could inspire us all to even stronger commitments. Thank you very much. Kamsamita. Thank you, Ambassador Solberg. Actually, Norway is a leading country regarding supporting forestation, not only domestically, but globally. Okay, next, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Ricardo Calderon, Executive Director from Asia Forest Cooperation Organization. Actually, AFOCO is a regional organization specifically focusing on forest collaboration. Therefore, I believe that you have many stories to share regarding forest's role as carbon neutrality vehicle. So, Ricardo, you have the floor, please. Thank you, uh, Madam Moderator. Uh, I'm Ricardo Calderon, the Executive Director of the Asian Forest Cooperation Organization. Uh, our presentation will uh, basically focus on the role of uh, APOCO uh, on the global net zero and peace. The COVID-19 has significantly slowed economic growth, disrupted processes in the supply chain, increased unemployment and inequalities and livelihood of countries around the world. However, global platform and initiatives for government are in place. Uh, including the private sector, for the world to build back better and realize sustainable development without threatening the health of planet Earth. The recently concluded 16th session of the United Nations Forum on Forests, wherein the forum considered the interlinkages between the global forest goals and target and sustainable development goal. The UN Decade of Ecosystems Restoration that aims to support and scale up efforts to prevent, halt, and reverse the degradation of ecosystems worldwide, and raise awareness of the importance of successful ecosystems restoration. The 15th session of the Conference of Parties of the Convention on Biological Diversity for the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework that built around the 2050 vision of living in harmony with nature. The 26th session of the Conference of the Parties of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the submission of the updated nationally determined contributions wherein forests may be part of the sectoral targets or part of the economy-wide target. The bond challenge to restore 350 million hectares by 2030. The Davos One Trillion Tree Initiative that aims to, to unite and promote reforestation efforts worldwide mobilize funds and political support, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, Forest Solutions Group that aims to advance the bioeconomy and a thriving forestry sector, healthy, productive forests, and people, including the well-being. And presently, the P4G Summit here in Seoul, wherein the Asian Forest Cooperation Organization organized a side event entitled Forest-Based Solution, a path to build back better, reiterating the role of forests in the global net zero ambition. In the Asian region, the Asian Forest Cooperation Organization with its 13 parties and two observers envision for a greener Asia, resilient forests, landscape, and communities. Granted observer status in the 75th session of the UN General Assembly and accredited as an ODA eligible international organization by the OECD Development Assistance Committee that provided for the strong basis for APOCO in joining the global initiative for regional action on the role of forests in global net zero, forest-based solutions, and sustainable development. As far as the objectives of APOCO, we contribute to our member countries' actions on achieving the global forest goals of increasing forest cover of up to 3% worldwide from the current level of 31.2% as is in policy development, develop adaptation and mitigation actions in implementing the Paris Agreement for the forest sector 
and improving the livelihood of forest dependent communities through the investment in economically viable forest enterprises. Our APOCO project funds and APOCO portfolio investments on landmark programs and regional multi-country programs fosters close cooperation and meaningful participation among our member parties. Our country-driven projects support country priorities under the country-specific national strategy. We are expanding our partnership and coverage beyond the forest sector through the Landscape Partnership Asia in partnership with C4ECRAP and Global Evergreen Alliance. We are striving to restore 10 million hectares of dry lands and drought prone areas in South Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia, and Central Asia by 2032. Our focus landmark and regional programs and county driven projects serves as a platform for exchange of technical expertise and technical cooperation as we open the line of communication through technical discussions, sharing of project experiences and milestones. Our training programs at the Regional Education and Training Center for policymakers and frontline forestry personnel enhances forest governance, improve capacities of forest institutions, and sharpen the technical skills of frontline forestry practitioners. Our capacity development program includes science and technology exchange partnership for our forest researchers, graduate scholarship program for Asian government officials, our fellowship exchange for no officials of member parties for knowledge enhancement. AFOC also facilitate access of member parties to diverse sources of funding mechanisms and help equip themselves with skills and capacities in communication, networking, and fund mobilization. Through the Landscape Partnership Asia with its founding members, C4 ECRAP, and the Global Evergreening Alliance, wherein AFOCO is performing the dual role as founding part partner and at the same time the Secretariat, AFOCO envisions to build robust partnership amongst government, efficiently mobilize financial, human, and technical resources to achieve transformational change within landscape in the rehabilitation of 10 million hectares of dry lands and drought prone areas in South Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia, and Central Asia by 2032. As a formal multilateral development organization, the Asian Forest Cooperation Organization shall continue to provide the bridge in order to enhance cross-sectoral cooperation and broaden coordination among member parties, party institutions on the management of forests for the sustainable production of economic goods and ecosystem services, biodiversity conservation, climate change mitigation and adaptation in order to achieve sustainable development. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Executive Director. Yes, we have heard the activities and efforts by one developed country and one regional organization. So now I'd like to move to a developing country. Therefore, um, Ms. Milagros Dukam, Deputy Minister from Dominican Republic, her message is ready. So let's hear the views from a developing country. Greetings to all from the Dominican Republic. We are delighted to announce in this important summit our intention to adhere to the Peace Forest Initiative, an initiative which, which accelerates the implementation of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification by creating a network to facilitate knowledge exchange and multilateral cooperation in order to improve the livelihood of communities affected by land degradation and ensuring peace through joint management of transnational resources. We're confident that through enhancing cooperation between our countries, together we will be able to deliver land degradation neutrality and the achievement of SDG 15 of protecting, restoring, and promoting sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems and consequently combating desertification. More specifically, our membership in this alliance will leverage some of Dominican Republic's LDN goals, which include, by 2025, restoring 30,000 hectares of dry forest with early signs of deterioration and incremental reduction of productivity, and by 2030, increasing forest cover by 8.5% through reforestation and conservation and reducing by 50% the total area affected by forest fires with emphasis in our border zone. 
These ambitions are in line with the global need for increasing the boldness of our climate actions to secure our net zero commitments while keeping 1.5 degree goal within reach. The Dominican Republic believes that in light of the 2030 agenda and the Paris Agreement, triangular and south-south cooperation will play a pivotal role as effective mechanisms to address the mounting challenges of the climate crisis. In the case of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, as two countries sharing a common island, the impact of climate change cuts across our geopolitical boundaries and across social, economic, and political dimensions, therefore making us natural allies during the green recovery process to build forward better. In an encounter between the Ministry of Environment of both countries in January this year, we made a commitment to assist each other in the attainment of our goals in broad areas such as biodiversity, climate change, desertification, and forest management. In this context, working together within the Peace Forest Initiative not only will improve our governance of joint resources in a spirit of goodwill and collaboration, but it will also boost economic resilience and reduce vulnerability and disaster risk in our border. In a recent monitoring to determine areas affected by desertification and drought in the border, we identified important areas of opportunity related to soil erosion, land use conflict, and water availability and quality. In these communities, an interdisciplinary approach is all the more important, as environmental degradation is inextricably linked with poverty, migration, low technology, and traditional and cultural practices. Some potential activities for a PFI project would be creating a baseline and collecting accurate data of forest-related and other environmental indicators, implementing pilot projects of climate-smart agriculture, creating opportunities for sustainable tourism, strengthening participation mechanisms, restoring critical areas for biodiversity and water production, and creating awareness around soil degradation. There are already strong commitments at the highest levels to make every effort to tackle deforestation and desertification and reduce risks of resource conflict between our countries, which will need to be coupled with sound policymaking and institutional coherence, efficient multi-level coordination, access to finance, the creation of an investment portfolio, and innovation and technological transfer. We hope that this P4G summit and especially this special breakout session on forests can deliver strong results and bolster the will of a broad range of actors to achieve green growth, climate change action, and the global goals towards 2030. Thank you, uh, Ms. Deputy Minister. Thank you for sharing your country's strong political willingness to restore forest and also your support to Peace Forest Initiative. So although Dominican Republic is a developing country, I'm quite sure that in forest, you are a leading country globally. Now, I'd like to move to next panelist, uh, Dr. Jolman Velasquez, Director of Mitigation and Adaptation from Green Climate Fund. So, Dr. Director, actually, uh, Green Climate Fund is a fund uniquely mandated to support developing countries' climate change action. And I'm sure that Forest is a critical part of your organization's portfolio. Therefore, if you are going to share how GCF is supporting developing countries regarding forest, what other success stories, what lessons your organization has learned, it would be very, very helpful for other developing countries. So please go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, for those of you who don't know the Green Climate Fund, we are a critical uh, part of the Paris Agreement. In fact, we were created to be an instrument, a financial instrument of the Paris Agreement. And we are mandated to help countries, in fact, in their fight on climate change, to help them in their uh, climate resilient and low emission pathways, to help them implement their uh, ambitions as uh, articulated in their national determined contributions. Um, we have um, eight areas that we invest in. Uh, it's shown in this uh, graph. And these are the amounts of funding that we have invested so far. We're quite, um, um, you know, uh, very uh, 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 good that we can invest in a wide range of areas. And as you can see here, there are two particular areas that are of interest to uh, forest and land use, and that is ecosystems and ecosystem services. That's the third area. And the last one, which is forest and land use. However, all of these areas contribute to our work 
on uh, forestry. Um, of uh, working with our partners, we have invested so far uh, $8.3 billion, uh, with a total funding size, uh, including co-finance, of $30 billion. Uh, the amount of investments that we have invested on uh, forestry and ecosystems is about uh, close to $2 billion. Now, what do we do uh, on uh, forestry and land use? What's the focus of the GCF? We focus on uh, one, conservation, because we think that uh, conserving is the cheapest and most cost-efficient approach. The other thing is that um, in our work, we think that there are simply carbon that is irreplaceable. We should not allow it to be, uh, to be uh, released. So uh, for these uh, ecosystems, like for example, peatlands, our approach is conservation. So uh, conservation areas is a particular uh, core area. It's a very efficient investment area for us. The second is uh, restoration. Uh, you've already heard that there is the decade of restoration coming up, but um, uh, restoration is particularly more, if more uh, cost, costly than uh, conservation, but it's a very important aspect of work that we do. The third one is sustainable use, because forests are not there uh, not to be used. There are also important aspects to be harmoniously used by people. So therefore, uh, forests need to be used for livelihood, so sustainable use and sustainable management. Now, um, the, the work that uh, we do so far um, uh, is actually, uh, because of the ability of the GCF to invest at scale, we invest in landscapes, total landscapes. So we, we look at uh, the whole jurisdictions. We are able to work in the totality of the jurisdiction. The other thing is that we work on trying to uh, make uh, or encourage zero emission um, um, uh, supply chains and um, uh, and uh, uh, private sector initiatives. Uh, we also do social forestry, uh, and finally, uh, Red Plus. So, so this is another thing that we do. Um, we invest in uh, small entrepreneurs, we invest in uh, um, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, but at the same time, we also invest in, uh, in engaging uh, and leveraging private sector. So those we all do. Um, the other thing that's very important for the GCF is we put people at the heart of our investments because forestry is about people. And it's very important that we in fact target people and we have a very strong indigenous people policy because uh, we believe that uh, forestry needs to be working hand in hand with people. So uh, pro uh, safeguards and protection is at the heart of our investments. Um, the other thing is that uh, there was some talk about uh, the Great Green Wall. This is one of our flagship programs uh, for the Great Green Wall. And in here, uh, the work that the GCF is doing actually leverages all of the investment areas that we do. So we, we not only uh, try and encourage uh, forestry, we also try and manage the land, but also we try and promote renewable energy access. So uh, the totality in also livelihoods. So the totality of our investment uh, in uh, the Sahel to try and promote uh, a wall of forest to stop the spread of desertification in Africa is a very important um, uh, work that we're doing, not just for climate change, but also for development. Now, there was some talk about Red Plus, and uh, in 2017, the GCF uh, started uh, what we call results-based payments. So we started uh, with an initial allocation of $500 million. So we pay $5 a ton for uh, emission reductions of countries. And so far, we have invested in eight countries, Brazil, Ecuador, Chile, Paraguay, Colombia, uh, Indonesia, Argentina, and Costa Rica, producing about 100 million tons of emission reductions so far. Um, and um, now uh, we've learned a lot in our work on um, Red Plus. And uh, the things that we have learned include uh, equity, um, safeguards, uh, and also the role of the GCF in non-market and market, because there was some question, I think, in the uh, a little bit uh, earlier about the role of the private sector. Um, we are also asking ourselves, what is the role of GCF on uh, how do we encourage private sector in forestry investment? Because uh, if we only pay $5 a ton, that means that if we invest the totality of our $10 billion, it's not gonna be enough because the need for forest restoration and conservation will be in billions, if not in trillions. 
So the only way is to get the private sector to invest. And uh, one question is that why would the private sector invest in forestry? Now, there are these uh, net zero goals. And as we know, it's not just the governments, it's also the private sector. And for them, it's either they invest, they make part of their business towards climate change, or if they cannot do that to meet the net zero goal, they have to buy emission reductions. Now, why don't they invest or buy reductions from forestry? That's the question. And there are a lot of problems. One problem, of course, is regression. Because uh, what if you invest and there's a forest fire? So therefore, what you invested is gone. So we have to ensure that there is no regression. The second thing is traceability. We need, when I invest, I need to know where it is. And the third uh, problem is that it's not just carbon, it's also about people. And as, as I've said, forestry, if you're not careful, you could displace indigenous people. It's, you know, it's, it's a very important aspect that you do not serve one against another goal. So it's ESG, environment, sustainability, and governance. So most private sector are interested in the totality of these three. So without uh, dealing with all of that, we cannot get the private sector to invest. So what is the future? With the negotiations of the Climate Change Convention on Article 6 and the possibility of the growth of um, uh, carbon markets, and there's a lot of projection of the voluntary mar carbon market growing tremendously in the coming years, the question is, what is the role of the GCF in that? Are we a public sector entity that just pays $5 a ton? Or is there a role for us to encourage private sector investments so that then we could enable them to actually meet their net zero goal? So that's, I think, the future. We have no answer yet, but we're waiting for the negotiations to continue. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing GCF's vision and activities. Also, you emphasized a lot about the role of private sector. When we are talking about climate change action and net zero by 2050, uh, many experts, they say um, public money is not enough at all and government's efforts are not enough at all. And uh, private sector's participation, their investment is crucial. Therefore, I'm very pleased to, to invite one panelist from private sector, uh, Chief Executive Officer from SK Forest, uh, Mr. Chong Inbo is here. So yes, from the private sector's perspective, why your company is interested in forest, what activities your company is doing, where are you investing, please share your experience and vision, please. Thank you, Jenny. 안녕하세요. I'm Inbo Chung, CEO of SK Forest. Uh, first of all, it's an honor to be part of a panel at this P4G Summit Forest Session. Uh, I hope that this uh, event will spread out a bond, bond of uh, sympathy around the world about the importance of the forest as a carbon sink. As you, as you know, SK Forest is one of the largest forestry and landscape architecture company in Korea, established about well, 50 years ago. Back then, Korea was one of the poorest country in the world, and people used trees as the means of heating and cooking. As you can see in the picture above, there were almost no trees in the mountains. Our former chairman, Jong Yan Che, uh, in SK's terminology, he designed the future of Korea by planting trees in the devastated mountains in deserted area, and by providing full scholarship for higher education to students with potential to become world-class leader in all walks of life. Big picture he had in mind was that when the trees grow in full, they could become the source of the scholarship fund, but it never really did happen due to various reasons. But instead, now we are facing a climate crisis and maybe a carbon issue might give us opportunity to fulfill his former chairman's dream. By all means, um, maybe it's uh, fair to say that the social value 
and ESG management that SK pursues today began with the afforestation of former chairman. In recent years, SK Forest and SK affiliate companies worked together to make our world full of greener landscape. We started our overall project by building forests and parks in the dry Uzbekistan Navoye area, and we restored some Tunisia's cork work trees as well. In Vietnam, SK Innovation employees visit multiple times a year to plant mangrove trees alongside the coastline. Since May 2018, more than 160,000 trees have been planted on 40 hectares. And also, SK Forest with many partners started ARCDM project for the first time in Korea to restore 75 hectares of land that had been neglected as a, just a pasture. Well, some of you may have already heard of SK efforts to collaborate and remain together with the stakeholders. Throughout the years, uh, concepts have changed um, from creating social value to creating happiness, uh, creating, well, creating stakeholders' happiness to creating social value. And now we are more focusing on ESG management. Well, having said that, uh, to meet minimum environmental requirements, SK is planning to offset all of scope one, two, and three emissions by 2050. We are pursuing every method possible to meet the goal. But as you can see, still there are quite a gap to fill. MBS is one of our focal areas to en enlarge the amount of carbon offset. To make that happen um, domestically, SK Forest is designing a structure to support and revitalize pri private forestry sector to cultivate better trees and enhance carbon sink. Within better trees, uh, within frame, we are hoping to make a carbon credit trading to companies in need to attain natural targets required by vendors in value chains. All in all, if this endeavor happens, it will help uh, Korea meet the net zero goal by 2050. Global wide forestry is another target area for SK Forest in years to come. Now we are collaborating with uh, KFS and counterpart countries to select suitable uh, sites for Red Plus and ARCDM projects. We have no limitation for selection, but for now, we are mainly looking into South Asia, South America, and Africa. Also, uh, we are developing eco-friendly businesses that can respond to climate change and sustainable life. As you all see, social economic changes brought up planetary needs. We are constantly studying changes around us to capture the opportunity and provide just-in-fit products. Furthermore, we are transforming all of our existing business into eco-friendlier and more vegan to meet new generation's expectations. And last but not least, we are planning to open up our assets and infrastructures to more people to enjoy and experience and realize the importance of the forest and trees via camping events and pop-up gardens. Thank you all for listening to our stories. 감사합니다. Thank you, Mr. Jong, for sharing your company's vision and activities. I believe uh, the former chairman of SK Group, Choi jong hyun he was indeed a man of vision because he invested a lot to natural resources and human resources. And during his time, there was no term like ESG, 
However, now ESG is a new norm and principle of private sector's activities. Therefore, I congratulate your company for leading the efforts of ESG now. Um, so we have heard the perspectives and views from governments, international organizations, and private sector. So I think it's time to invite uh, from audience, if any audience member has questions or comments towards the panelists. By the way, I would like to emphasize that Director General Park eun from Korea Forest Service is here. And I particularly thank the Korea Forest Service to organize this special session, which is very relevant for the purpose and vision of P4G. Therefore, if anyone has a question to Director General Park, please address him. So let me open the floor to the audience. If you have any question or comment, please raise your hand. Identify your, yourself first and then address whom you are asking questions. The floor is open. Yes, uh, young lady, please. Uh, thank you for giving me a chance. I'm Eun Choi, working at National Institute of Forest Science. I have a question to Africa. Uh, when I think about uh, COVID, uh, post-COVID-19, uh, climate change, biodiversity, and other things, as you know, forest is the one of best one of the best solutions to handle this kind of situation. So, what is your what is Africa's um, a strategy or a priority with your parties to contribute to this worldwide issue? Thank you. Uh, thank you for that very nice question. Uh, actually, COVID-19 has effectively somehow affected some of our field activities, but despite the challenges of COVID-19 due to the limited travel, uh, we have constant communication with our member parties in the implementation of our uh, restoration projects. We are focusing now on the program-oriented approach as far as our development of our project so that there will be more uh, collaboration and discussion among member parties uh, that could serve as a platform also for our exchange of expertise. Uh, we're still doing our capacity building activities despite COVID-19, although virtually, but this is based in, uh, in uh, Seoul, also with the challenge in Myanmar out na right now. But uh, despite these challenges, we were able to function normally and achieve what we are supposed to do, and at the same time provide the capacity building program for our uh, uh, member parties on, on policy development, program development, forest restoration, and other forest-related activities. Thank you. Thank you for the question and your response. Um, any other audience member? Please go ahead. A gentleman at the front row. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Orlando Panganiban. I'm working at the APOCO Secretariat. And my question uh, goes to uh, Mr. Jerry Velasquez of GCF. Uh, sir, it is uh, very interesting to note from your presentation, especially on the GCF uh, portfolio on uh, approved projects on uh, Red Plus, that Indonesia, who coincidentally, you know, member of the P4G and also a party to APOCO, Maybe there may be some good reasons why they, you know, uh, avail a uh, uh, Red Plus project. And uh, your answer uh, is indeed uh, worth sharing to our members so that uh, in the future they can also avail us when they are ready. And, uh, as, and if possible, uh, an organization like APOCO would like to assist, uh, how can we do that? Thank you. Please go ahead. Yes. Um, many thanks. Um, to, to be able to access results-based payments, countries need to uh, do three steps, readiness, implementation, and monitoring and verification. Then they need to get this verification from the UNFCCC secretariat. Once it's ver verified and technically then counted on how much the emissions that they are uh, able to, to actually get payments for, then they uh, send it to an institution like the GCF. 
we have our own scorecard that we then assess on how much we are able to pay uh, them. You will notice that most of our countries that we have paid so far are in Latin America, because Latin America are more advanced in their processes on this. Uh, some of the Asian countries are just now coming online, and then African countries are coming uh, not, not too long, but they're coming uh, also following this. Now, the key aspect of, uh, of this is that uh, the funds are already, are payments for results that they have already achieved. So that means we pay them for things that have already happened. It's not for the future, they've already achieved the results in the, in the past. Now, it's their, uh, so the money that we give them, in the case of Indonesia, $100 million, where do they use that? So that's uh, the important aspect. We, the last thing we want is that they use it for deforestation or they use it for something that does not lead to uh, increasing the forest cover. So uh, a very good uh, thing that Indonesia did is the, the proceeds that we gave them, it's actually decentralized. So uh, it's actually also given, because usually either you keep them in the central government, you know, as budget support, the case of Indonesia, they actually decentralized it for the implementation of their forestry plan. So it's very good. Now, in the case of Afoko, what can Afoko do? Uh, so Afoko could help countries like Indonesia. And there are many countries in Asia that are not yet eligible for results-based payment uh, through our readiness program. Each country is eligible to receive up to a million dollars per year just to get ready to access GCF resources. And these a uh, million dollars, uh, they could actually channel it to any partner, including AFOCO, if they so wish. And usually it is a government institution, it mainly it's GGGI, our strongest partner. Uh, it could be a UN agency and so on. Uh, depending on their priority, uh, it could be JICA, for example, so they do that. So getting countries ready, we do get a lot of readiness requests to help countries get ready. And it could be in the first three steps getting ready, getting implementation, and getting the uh, mo uh, monitoring and verification. So these are all eligible within the $1 million of the country per, per year. Thank you. Thank you for your question and the response from GCF. Uh, anybody else? Please, yes, another gentleman. Uh, I am He Han uh, from National Institute of Forest Science. Uh, thank you very much for um, today's nice dis discussion and um, presentation. Uh, I have a simple question to uh, Dr. Park Eun-sik, uh, Director General of Korea, Korea Forest Service. Um, today I saw, I was able to see uh, several cases uh, between the countries uh, to collaborate for um, the carbon reduction uh, to achieve the net zero target. So would you, would you give me some uh, additional or uh, more detailed comments on so what are the effect, effort of, of Korea Forest Service in international cooperation to achieve the national uh, net zero target of, uh, of the country? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, as is well known, the policy is an important carbon sink. Uh, on the other hand, uh, however, uh, uh, it is uh, said that uh, uh, land use and land use change and forest sector accounts for 23% uh, of the global greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, this is why we need to focus on forest restoration and uh, protection. I think uh, the, for the successful uh, 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 best practice in international cooperation, uh, action and co uh, collaboration, uh, are the two major pillars uh, of the best practices. So uh, in terms of action, uh, the Korea Forest Service uh, is taking uh, actions in implementing uh, various forest projects in developing countries and cooperating with the international organizations. Uh, at the same time, the, we are putting efforts uh, together with the global uh, communities. I think no single country can solve a uh, current uh, environmental crisis alone. Uh, I think the uh, visible outcomes can be reached only when countries work together. So, uh, for instance, uh, the Korea po and government uh, is uh, taking part in the global forest initiative, such as uh, forest uh, and landscape restoration mechanism with uh, FAO 
and Forest Ecosystem Restoration Initiative with CBD, and Changwon Initiative and Peace Forest Initiative with uh, UNCCD. Uh, also, the KFS uh, will start a new uh, PPOG project in Ethiopia, uh, which aims to restore forest ecosystem and uh, promote the sustainable uh, agriculture. Uh, I think uh, as well as the, uh, this uh, field uh, project, uh, we are engaged in the global uh, dialogue actively. Uh, for example, uh, we recently joined the fact dialogue of forest, agriculture, and commodity uh, trade of, uh, dialogue of UNFCCC. Uh, I believe uh, our work will make an advance uh, toward the uh, sustainable and resilient future. So the Korea Forest Service uh, wants to uh, collaborate with uh, other partner countries uh, and uh, international organizations. So uh, we have a uh, lot of interest in the Red Plus project in developing countries. Uh, at the same time, uh, we will uh, keep uh, going on with the in, uh, international organizations to uh, restore the forest and the, uh, develop the local livelihood for the developing countries' people. So this is a brief uh, activity, activities uh, in, uh, of the uh, Korea Forest Service in terms of the, the, the forest restoration and protection. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director General Park, for sharing uh, Korea's vision. By the way, as far as I know, um, it was emphasized at the, at the Minister of Forest's speech as well. Uh, the 15th World Forestry Congress will be held in Seoul, Korea next year, 2022. And I would like to invite two international organizations' heads, uh, international organizations' representatives, yes. So APOCO and GCF, both organizations are located in Korea. And I am sure that we are working very closely with the Korea Forest Service in preparation for World Forestry Congress. World Forestry Congress must be a global gathering to reconfirm the strong commitment regarding forest as a main vehicle to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 and peace building community restoration as well. Therefore, if I just invite you to share briefly what will be your suggestion or recommendation to Korean government as the host country of the Congress to lead. So if you make any suggestion to Korea to lead this matter regarding forestry, it will be very useful for Korea KFS to be better prepared. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are very much uh, closing work uh, very closely with the uh, Korea Forestry, uh, Korea Soap Forest Service along this line. In fact, uh, we are already discussing on the uh, pre-Congress event for the World Forestry Congress. And this is uh, a Congress, uh, we will name it Asia Forestry Congress as a prelude to the World Forestry Congress. We're planning to highlight research institutions and share, it's like a research forum, and then in the morning and in the afternoon, we're planning to have a capacity development program as a forum also, because these are two very important uh, low-hanging fruit, fruit. It's a low-hanging fruit as far as forest and forestry. You know, forest and forestry is not just a sector. It's an activity and a process, and research and capacity development is a very important component when it comes to forestry uh, restoration activities. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your support to uh, Korea Forest Service from APOCO. So uh, GCF must have suggestions, recommendations for Korea to lead in preparation for World Forestry Congress. Please. Um, thank you very much. It will be our pleasure to contribute to the World Forestry Congress. Um, from the GCF side, we would be more than happy to uh, share the lessons that we've learned over the past several years of our investments, especially on Red Plus results-based payments. There's a lot of lessons learned. It would be very interesting for us to understand how the evolving carbon markets, market-non-market -market instruments will play a role in, um, 
in, um, in forestry. So I think uh, we would be more than happy if this is a topic uh, to contribute to that uh, in the Congress. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, maybe Mr. Park, if you want to add, if you want to respond briefly uh, to the international organization representatives regarding World Forestry Congress next yeah. year. Yes. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you very much for your suggestion and opinion. Uh, actually, the, uh, I'm the Secretary General for the, the World Forest Congress uh, Secretariat. So uh, maybe your uh, participation will be uh, highly appreciated. So I'd like to uh, add some more of my opinion on this session on behalf of my minister and my organizations. I'd like to thank you uh, all for accepting the invitation to this uh, uh, special session on forest. I think uh, this session is very meaningful to us. Uh, we, today we were able to see the, how much important force is in achieving uh, global net zero and peace. So uh, it is clear that the, the, this session has been a great opportunity to share the, the global effort to address climate change. So also I'd like to uh, ask for your uh, continuous support and interest in the global forestry sector's effort, particularly the 15th World Forest Congress, which will be held in uh, May next year. So thank you very much. Thank you, Director General Park. So at this session, we all confirmed that uh, planting tree is planting a better future. So let's make carbon neutral, peaceful future happen by planting trees, by conserving forest. And I thank all speakers, panelists, and audience for your excellent contribution and inspiring presentation as well. So I'd like to bring this session to the end. I wish all of you stay in a good health and let's meet in World Forest Congress next year in Seoul. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good afternoon. This has been the 2021 P4G Seoul Summit special breakout session on forest. We would like to extend our sincere gratitude to our guests, participants, and also viewers online who stayed with us until the end of the program. So thank you once more, and we hope you enjoyed the rest of the P4G Summit. 감사합니다. <laughs>